I'll show you a couple tricks on what to look for to solve the problem. All right, so does your Sportsman 500 uh, idle good, but once you hit the throttles, she wants to die. I got that issue with this one, and I've been getting uh, quite a few questions on why that is. Um, you know, it could come down to timing, you know, your uh, valve adjustment. Uh, that's, you know, a little far off, but uh, a lot of it stems down to is the carburetor, the fuel pump, the air lines, the air box itself. So I already took the air box out. And uh, on this particular box, the little tabs are broken off. So this lid actually does not seal properly. There's actually uh, a bunch of problems I've noticed. Um, this hose going to the air box is not correct. So you got your vent hose going, it should be to the uh, top of the oil fill, which is down here. And the hose comes in through the top. It's a breather hose. And uh, this is a 96, so this one uh, doesn't have the breather hose coming off the engine and up to the air box. Uh, this one is in a different spot. Normally, if you have a newer style one, like a 97, 98, there's a breather hose coming off the block in the front, comes up, and there's a there's a filter, and then it goes up to the air box. So you want to check to make sure there's no cracks in any of those hoses because this vacuum-operated carburetor is very temperamental um, when it's not getting the right airflow. Um, you got cracks in your hoses wrong style hose, leaks in your air box. This particular ATV was sitting for, I don't know, six months to a year, and when I got it, the carb was all gummed up from the gas. So I went through and I cleaned it, and you know, there's some guys that say, yeah, you should just be able to get away with a good cleaning on the carb, and that's it. Uh, I, I don't buy into that. Uh, I, I usually get a carb rebuild kit because you get nice clean jets. Uh, the fuel's going to flow through a lot smoother than you know older uh, jet that uh, may look clean but uh, could be a little crusty. So I uh, decided with this video, I want to show you guys a little trick of what I like to do. Um, kind of bypasses the guesswork. You know, could it be the carb? Uh, in this case, I. I think that's the majority of the problem, is this carburetor. Um, something doesn't seem to be opening and closing right. If I hit the gas, she takes off like a rocket, but then all of a sudden she just blah. And if I go up a hill, it wants to die. Um, a lot of that could be the, uh, the diaphragm on top of the carburetor here, causing that maybe it's not opening. And once again, that's a vacuum issue. Um, not a right amount of airflow. Um, carburetor, even though I cleaned it, still could be uh, something minor somewhere that uh, that I'm not seeing. So I ordered myself a bunch of goodies and uh, this is my little quick tip of the day. You want to bypass all that stuff, go buy yourself a cheap $37 carburetor off of eBay and uh, throw that bad boy in. Now, these carburetors aren't the greatest. That's uh, an aftermarket carb. Um, I'm not knocking the product, but uh, from what I hear, uh, they only last a year or so and then issues happen. So, but I don't know, 37 bucks? I, uh, I don't know, what's worth more, your time or your money? I'd rather throw away 37 bucks, try it out, see if it clears up the issue or spend four hours trying to figure it out. So, that's number one. Number two, I got a fuel pump. Might not be getting enough fuel. As dirty as this is, this was the uh, the one I called the cow in my last video. Uh, I can't see it under there. That, uh, that fuel pump is pretty dirty and crusty and who knows what got in there. So it may not be pumping out right. Could be a vacuum issue with uh, not enough fuel pumping into the carburetor. 
Um, and once again, back to the airlines, the airbox. Um, so save yourself a lot of time and headaches. Give this a shot first. You know, you probably wasted money on worse things already. So, thirty-seven dollar carb. Find out if uh, it improves power, and then you know where to start. So, and then from there, I would replace the vacuum lines. Um, do those two things, and uh, depending how old your 500 is, I would uh, replace the fuel lines too. Only because uh, once they get old, they get soft, and uh, once again, that vacuum from the fuel pump makes the fuel lines collapse if they're soft. Believe it or not, they do. And then they pinch off the, the amount of fuel going to the carb. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna throw that new cheap carb in, see if that cures my problem. I'm gonna replace the fuel lines and the vacuum lines, put the air box back together, and um, I also uh, got myself a clean, brand new air filter, which will help also. But if I can get that uh, air box sealed up nice, get my new uh, fuel lines and vacuum lines in, and put that carburetor in, I bet you that's gonna cure my problem. And it, when I hit the throttle, it's not gonna die. So stay tuned and see if I'm correct. Another quick tip you can try is, um, while you're driving, hit the override button. Sometimes this can be an electrical issue. And um, say you're going in reverse and it spits and sputters, you hit the override button, the problem goes away. Uh, try hitting it uh, while you're in drive and hold it and see if that improves anything. So if that's your issue, it could be uh, an issue with the CDI box or the uh, reverse limiter. And that would cause your uh, ATV to spit and sputter and want to die too. So keep that in mind. Um, like I said, I'm gonna try the cheap carb first, see if that uh, solves the problem. And uh, after I replace all the vacuum lines and fuel lines, if that doesn't work, I'm uh, gonna go check out some electrical stuff. That crazy override button can cause some problems. So there's a way to bypass that. So keep that in mind, but I'm gonna start here first, start taking that carb out and uh, put the new one in, see what happens. So I like to free up uh, as much stuff and get it out of the way as I can. So I, took, I loosened up the bolts for the gas tank, lifted that up a little bit. And uh, now I'm loosening the, uh, the clamp on the boot for the carb. Okay, so another thing to keep in mind is that carb boot likes to get a little dry rotted and uh, you can get some hairline cracks in there you might not even see. Uh, sometimes you'll be sucking in air through there and that'll lean out the carb causing it to backfire. Uh, there's a couple tricks you can do. You can uh, leave it run, spray a little starting fluid at it or um, carb cleaner. If it acts like it uh, revs up higher then you know you got a leak. Um, usually what I like to do is uh, I'll replace the boot if I can or if it's something minor I'll just try to repair the boot. But uh, that could be a cause of a backfire issue as well. All right, so I've done this so many times, so I kind of forgot to show you viewers. So I've probably done it probably a hundred times. So I'll take the cover off, carburetor, and uh, you want to get the throttle cable out. So I squeeze the throttle up the handle. Now I'm actually doing this the opposite way. Normally I'd stand, be standing on your side. Grab that. Grab a little poker, the cable out, and this little cable stop comes out. And that's it. And you can loosen this up, pull that out. Uh, I made a special special wrench. I just kind of took an old wrench and I hacked the sides so I can get that choke cable off. That'll fit in there. Just give it a turn. That way it fits in there. And it's easier just to spin it. 
Alright. This is my uh, chalk. Now you get a new chalk with the carburetor. So use that one. Pull that out. Pull the spring back. Actually get a spring with it too. There you go. One carburetor removed. I'm going to put the new one on. Alright, shed a little more light on the subject. So I got this threaded in where it needs to be. And Keep in mind you might have to adjust the uh, throttle cable too. Um, when you're done with this, uh, up on top there's an adjustment. I'm used to doing this from your side, so I'm doing this backwards for me. So it's back around, get it in place. Stopper in there, got the cable behind here. Should be done. There we go. There we go, got her. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump it up just a little bit right away. Think it needs to be and I'll go ahead and put the car on and put the carb back in. Alright, got my new carb hooked up. Uh, I didn't put the air box on yet. Uh, I want to see how she responds without the air box and uh, I'll show you what she does. Fire this bad boy up. It starts a whole lot better. I have to adjust the idle a little bit. Still hesitating a little bit. Still backfiring a little bit. But so I mean, it's uh, carb either needs a little adjustment or there's a possible crack in the carb boot. I know I'm not going to get a very good shot of this, but I got the carburetor off the boot. And what I'm doing is I'm prying up and down on it. And right about here, whoop, you can't see it with my finger anyway. When I flex on this, I see cracks in the carb boot. You can see that in the light. So, one of my quick fixes is I like to take black electrical tape and wrap it around the carb boot. And I'm going to put the car back on and see if uh, she's still sucking air and acting like she wants to quit. And uh, so that tells me I have to replace that car boot. But for now, just to see if uh, that is the problem, I'm going to put some electrical tape around it. Put the car back on and the clamp, clamp her up, and see what happens. Alright, a little electrical tape to the rescue. Got it on that car boot. Tell you, this stuff can come in handy. So I wrapped it a couple of times around that, uh, uh, I don't know, you guys call it uh, an intake boot. I call it a carb boot. But uh, the boot that goes from the carb to the head had a crack in it. Watch this. Now she runs good. No more backfiring, it's not sucking in any air. Perfect. Now I'll put the air box back on and that'll readjust the idle. Problem solved. So if you got issues with your carb or want to choke out, you know, like I said, check your fuel lines. In this case, it was the carb boot. 
Yeah, I spent $37 on a carb. Uh, I tell you what, it improved the power immediately. Um, the old carb, I was actually having a hard time uh, starting it. Let me show you. She was pretty crusty. Even though I uh, cleaned it, uh, I don't know, like I said, uh, unless you have one of those electronic carb cleaners, um, I don't know, I would check into this, buy a rebuild kit for the carb, but in this case it was the carb boot. So, you saw how it was acting before, I'd hit the throttle, it would die, it would idle beautifully, might want to check this out. But like I said, go through everything, fuel lines, replace those, mine are soft, um, I found that out. Uh, my uh, vacuum lines, they aren't correct, somebody put them in the wrong, put the wrong type of hose on, that's not correct at all. And. Uh, fix the air box and this bad boy should be good to go. Hope this helped you guys out with your carb issues or your uh, your quad uh, puking out on you. He said I've had uh, a lot of questions on that so I thought I'd shoot this video and and uh, show you guys what to look for. So subscribe to my channel, hit the bell if you want to have notifications for my new videos. I've got tons of videos on uh, Polaris ATVs from two strokes to four strokes. And like always, till next time.